Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Cornel Demeter from the Institute of Experimental Medicine, uh, which is uh, located in Budapest. And I introduce my uh, colleague, uh, Balázs Hangya, and uh, his uh, PhD student or postdoc, PhD student, I don't know, his PhD student, uh, Bálint Király. Uh, they give uh, a talk about his uh, very nice um, automated training system, this ATS, which is very a nice uh, equipment or, or device uh, to teach animals. And uh, Balaj is a PI of his uh, laboratory. He was here in our institute as a graduate student and uh, PhD student too. And then he has a postdoc in, uh, in America, if I could remember. And uh, since five years ago, he established uh, his uh, uh, group. Uh, and uh, I think he will talk about his group and the goal in, in, uh, in science uh, now. And uh, I give him uh, the possibility to talk about their system. Thank you very much. So we will talk about um, this automated training system we, we um, developed and um, I will kind of introduce it and um, uh, walk you through uh, the equipment and um, our initial thinking and then uh, Balint will explain what the kind of things we are doing with it right now, the things we are developing and the things that are in the making and the things which we are which we think are the the, the capabilities of uh, of the system uh, and also probably if you have questions about uh, specific specifics of how it works it's probably balint is more the go-to person than i am because uh, i just give talks right uh, and then others actually work in the lab so um just uh, just to introduce where we are coming from we're usually working on um, on on well controlled uh, well controlled behavioral tasks. Um, we work on rodents. I was um, doing my postdoc at um, Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, where this field of rodent cognition was uh, was uh, kind of born. And the idea of this, when uh, introduced by Carlos Svoboda and others, Carlos Brody, was um, to use, use the monkey tasks in, in rodents to get a good insight into, into behavior, and, but with uh, less cost and, uh, and uh, less fuss. Of course, um, rats and mice are not uh, monkeys, but there's, there are many things they can do. And the general logic is that we are trying to understand kind of the building blocks of uh, of behavior and uh, we absolutely of course do believe that it would be uh, best to understand uh, natural um, ecologically relevant behaviors and uh, in some cases uh, part part of that is of course uh, possible uh, uh, just going uh, immediately for those behaviors but in some cases uh, it's uh, it makes sense to try to understand uh, these blocks in a simplified simplified system one, uh, for instance, one success story is uh, how uh, dopamine uh, neurons encode reward prediction errors, which uh, might be important for learning. Once we understand this from simplified behaviors, we can quite well predict what we expect from these neurons in, uh, in more complex and uh, more naturalistic behaviors. So we work mostly on mice, but also to some degree in humans and uh, we borrow ideas from human psychophysics and, um, and from, from monkey research. It's, um, it's always challenging when I have a single screen and, uh, and parts are blocked. So I'm just talking about things I remember are there, but I'm just hoping. So uh, now let's, um, let's, let's, let's move on to, to, to this uh, automated uh, training system. So our goal was to, uh, to do fully automated training. And um, you see a picture of the equipment and we will, we will go through that in, in, in more details. 
but um, uh, also uh, one um, one important point I will also emphasize was to try to reduce the stress for the animals and also uh, try to remove all sorts of um, <clears throat> conceivable conceivable bias uh, from the experimenter side. Uh, for instance, um, subconsciously treating. Uh, wow. So um, so. When you use an automated training system, uh, for instance, deep thing you get uh, for free that there's, there won't be questions about, um, about bias of the experimenter treating control and treated animals differently. And uh, a lot of other uh, confound factors it removes like uh, was, was the experimenter male or female, how much coffee, uh, coffee he or she drank that morning and so on. And so this uh, uh, system was, uh, was actually developed by two uh, former lab members, uh, Esther uh, Birtalan, who was uh, an undergrad student, and Diana Balashvi, who, who was a postdoc at that time. And um, we wanted to go open source as much as we could. And so uh, most of the details and even much more you can find in this, um, uh, in this paper we published in uh, 2020. So what's, uh, what's the system, the, the apparatus? Um, first of all, we have a, uh, maybe if I make, do you see this pointer? Yes. yes so, we, so we have a training chamber. That's, uh, that's, that's, the, that's the gym, that's where the animal works. And, um, and that's where we can control the, the behavior. And uh, we have, in this case, five ports, and we can program pretty much any behavior that can be controlled by these five ports. And uh, the behavior control is by, um, by BPOT, that's from uh, Sandvers, but it's completely open uh, source, not only the software, but also the hardware. So we used to just uh, do circuit board sol uh, soldering and make these boxes ourselves, but if you if you don't want to do that, uh, you can also order this. We put um, the whole thing in uh, sound attenuated boxes. That, uh, that is actually also something we build ourselves. And actually, I didn't put it here, but we have another publication that's uh, uh, the first author is Solari, uh, where, we, where you can find all the details of uh, soundproof boxes if you, have, if you ever have to build one. And so um, this is uh, the picture of the full thing. So there's this training chamber I already showed in the middle. And then there are two uh, side rooms where, where two, two mice live. And usually there's one mouse in, in one side and other mouse in the other side. This also has the advantage that we can put, uh, if there's some manipulation, we can put a control animal in one side and the treated in the other side so that they're completely fully parallelly trained. Also, we experimented with uh, putting more mice and tracking them by RFIDs. Uh, we haven't, we don't really, we haven't really used that routinely. It seemed to be working, but if um, if 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 you need um, any of our experiences with that, just shoot us emails and we try to try to um, give uh, our status on that. Um, we have motorized gates. That's important. So. Um, these gates are also controlled by microcontrollers, just as the behavior in this uh, B-Pod box, and uh, that controls animals going in from the side chambers uh, to, the, to the training chamber. And so each animal in, in most of our applications, but of course this can be changed, goes into the training chamber every two hours. That means in every hour, one of the doors open, and then the animal goes there for training, if he or she wants, and then goes back home. And uh, we were initially worried that uh, what if they don't go home, they just hang out here, and then uh, the other animal cannot go, or they meet in the, in, in, in the middle, and then they move together, and you can never ever tell which is which. And uh, they, they actually, the, the good thing is that they usually don't do that. They like to go home. They're also 
creatures of habit after they train we train with uh, with with liquid reward after they train they're usually hungry so they want to go home eating and anyway that's their home so uh, they usually don't uh, want to stay for long in the in the, in the training chamber uh, we monitor them by uh, by cameras and so one can set up a um, uh, uh, distant monitoring system and even watch them from home and then uh, then this mouse reality show will compete with the evening series. So uh, you may have to you may have to uh, convince your partners that this will be very exciting. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise this this works uh, very very nicely. Um, and uh, the control code for the behavior is is right now in MATLAB for us, but uh, BPod also supports uh, Python. So. Uh, if, if someone likes that better, that's probably possible. Uh, the specific codes for, for behavior uh, will have to be written, but uh, anyways, probably all of us uh, would like to program different behaviors, and it's really not complicated to, to program a behavior in BPOD. Uh, one uh, just has to set up um, a finite state machine in which every state gets some inputs and sends some output, like a sound or light, or reward, and then uh, the input controls, like no spoke of an animal, for instance, controls uh, which state the system is going next. We started with the uh, with the five choice serial reaction time task, uh, where uh, where an animal is um, waiting for a visual cue. Um, after the start of the trial, there's a variable uh, inter-trial interval, then a stimulus appears in one of the ports. The animal has to go there and poke in that port. Then it makes, that means that's a correct response. If the animal pokes in another port, that's an incorrect response, uh, or sometimes the animal doesn't poke. And then uh, if the animal was correct, then it gets some food reward in a food uh, receptacle. Uh, we work with fluid uh, rewards, so we don't. We didn't need this receptacle. We actually deliver the fluid reward uh, directly in the ports, and we took this behavior because um, usually the hard uh, part of automating a complex behavior is to uh, find out the intermediate stages and how to switch between them. But for five choice, this is relatively well established. There's a there's a landmark paper by. Uh, Barry and colleagues, where they set up 12 training, uh, 12 training stages, uh, and the animal goes uh, through each stage. And if it uh, is good enough in the current stage, then it can it can go to the next stage. The difference between stages: so the stimulus duration is getting uh, less and less. So the animal has to pay more and more attention, and uh, the intertrial interval is getting longer. So the animal has to be a bit more patient and the so-called limited hold period, which is the waiting time after the stimulus appearance for the animal to make the nose poke is also getting less. That is, that is actually usually not a constraint because if the animal, is un, if the animal understands the task, then uh, it anyways uh, wants to go fast. So, uh, as I already said, every animal is, uh, is getting training every two hours and they go uh, to a training session, which is uh, 15 minutes. And um, if we train these animals manually, then they get a two hour uh, water access per day. They, uh, in both cases, get, uh, get uh, access to food and um, and when they are trained auto, auto, automatically, the only, the only uh, water they get is through the task. So this is, um, this is again, uh, uh, the, the five short serial reaction time task. Uh, there's the inter-trial interval after we present the light stimulus and then this limited hold period in which the animal can uh, produce a response. And uh, then, we trained the mice in this task um, for one week and uh, we checked uh, how much they actually go for the training because in this case they can freely choose every time whether they go 
uh, and uh, do the training or not. It turns out uh, most of the times they go, uh, especially uh, in their active period uh, when it's dark. So they were on normal uh, uh, light to dark cycle. So from 7 a.m. these were their uh, their uh, their uh, day daytime uh, activity, which is less compared to their nighttime activity, which is more. And the blue curve is uh, is their accuracy, which is on the other y-axis. And this blue curve shows that their ac accuracy actually didn't really change too much throughout the day. And then it was important to us to see whether animals get trained uh, the same uh, to the same degree, better or worse, compared to when we train the same mice uh, manually. And uh, manual training means that someone actually has to put in the mouse in, a, in an exactly same training box and then train the mice for, for half an hour and then take them out and repeat this every day. And uh, first of all, the, maybe the most telling measure is, is to which training stage they get uh, after one week. So if when we trained mice for one week on manual training, and uh, this is not just us being incompetent, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's also what uh, people report in papers. Uh, in one week, they only get to, to the second, third stage. Uh, rats are somewhat uh, faster actually, but um, this is where, where usually mice get in this task in one week. And if we train them in the automated system, they often get to uh, stage 10 or 11, or, or many mice even get uh, all the way to stage uh, 12. For, so that was, um, that was the first uh, very good news to us. And we also tested a cohort where we, uh, where we performed surgery to see whether that, uh, that cohort will train uh, less and um, uh, maybe a little bit, but there was no real significant dif difference between the 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 intact and the uh, and the uh, and the animals that underwent uh, surgery in the automated training system. We also compared accuracy. Uh, this is with the caveat that they may be at different training stage, so the accuracy is less comparable. But even uh, even with the ATS trained animals being further ahead in training stage, they they were also better in performance. And uh, they were also actually faster in terms of uh, reaction time. Uh, they also did um, less premature response that is making a nose poke before the stimulus comes on. And there were no significant differences in omission, though there was a tendency, and I think that's actually real that the ATS trained animals uh, do perform a little bit more omissions. Um, it might be because um, they have more uh, water available throughout the day than usually than the manually trained animals, so they are less thirsty and probably they also know that every two hours they can go so they don't have to work that hard every time they go. Uh, then we also compared um, the number of days the animals needed to reach uh, certain stages. So for the manually trained animals to reach uh, stage three, it usually took um, about a week and, uh, and only a few days for the ATS trained animals. And uh, this difference was also there when we trained animals uh, up to stage six. And then we compared whether uh, the animals actually uh, learn faster or the benefit is from performing more trials. And so we now look at uh, behavioral measures as a number of uh, a cumulative number of trials performed. And in that case, there's, there's no tremendous difference between the ATS trained and the manual and manually trained animals. So, so this shows that at least in this task, it seems like most of the benefit is performing a lot more trials in the ATS as compared to what is achievable by manual training.
I think what is what is in this slide, although I only see half of it, is uh, we introduced uh, we introduced uh, training delays and looked looked at how that affects uh, performance. So we trained mice for one week and uh, put them to rest for 17 days and trained another week and then uh, introduced another 12 uh, days delay. And uh, then we look at uh, how much, uh, whether the performance worsens after the delay. And it does a little bit. Now, if we look at the training stage, uh, the animals had to be retrained from a, from a somewhat earlier stage in the ATS, which was not present when, when we trained manually. But uh, also, please note that uh, the ATS trained animals were, 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 were far ahead when we introduced the delay. And also, after, after a week uh, training, they, they actually got even better than, where we were, than when they were uh, before the rest. And uh, the second uh, delay, in this case, did not introduce uh, much uh, worsening of performance. And uh, we see something kind of similar for, for accuracy. Now, even for the second, uh, second delay, we see some drop of accuracy, but this is recovered after a few days of, of, of retraining. And uh, there's not uh, much difference after a delay in, in premature responses. And uh, uh, maybe there's a little bit more omissions. Uh, then we did an, a different experiment. We actually not just introduced the delay, but we, we, we performed surgery on the animals. In this case, we actually trained the animals to the same stage. So the tra we trained um, mice to stage six, either, either training them manually or training them in the ATS, which of course meant more training days uh, when, when we trained manually. And so after the surgery, uh, it was it was easier and faster to retrain the ATS trained animals than the manually trained animals in this case. Uh, that was uh, in terms of accuracy and uh, we didn't see much difference in terms of uh, reaction times. And then we also measured the stress hormones to see whether it's uh, better for the animals that we don't touch them. And uh, it seems like they enjoy life more at least in terms of uh, uh, corticosterone levels. Well, this is control mice. Uh, they don't have much. Manually trained animals uh, produce the, the most amount of stress hormones and, and uh, ATS is in between, but definitely closer to the controls. We also checked how much water they, they consume uh, and also, also how, uh, how much weight uh, they lose. So in terms of weight loss, uh, there were no tremendous differences, although the, the group, so there were more mice in the ATS that uh, didn't really lose weight. That's that, uh, that's that, uh, can you turn that off? So that's, that, that's, that's this one third of, of, of the animals. And then there was there was not a there was not a lot of correlation between uh, between the actual water intake and the actual weight loss. At least uh, we didn't see. And um, now I would like to just highlight some more uh, benefits with the system. What we actively use, uh, we combine it with with wireless optogenetics. We use uh, this uh, Neuralux system, many of you are probably familiar with. Uh, this is uh, commercial, unfortunately. So uh, we, didn't, we didn't build an open source um, uh, wireless optogenetic system. So uh, we, we, we left some, some work for others, but uh, this uh, worked uh, fairly, fairly well in, in our setup. So we combine this uh, wireless system with, with this automated training. Uh, uh, we implant uh, these LEDs, which work uh, wirelessly by induction. And then in this case, we performed an, exper an experiment in, um, in, uh, on the cholinergic system. We, imp we implanted, um, we injected Chetcree animals with, uh, with chenorhodopsin so that uh, cholinergic cells can be activated by light, and we activated cholinergic cells by 20 hertz um, stimulation in the ITI, so before the stimulus comes on. And um, 
Here, I, I would like to note that these implants are, are fairly big, so they do make a damage. And the LED is on the side, so you have to implant them kind of next to the structure because they, they shine the light uh, to the side. Uh, but um, but if you if you, if you manage this, it, it seemed to work seemed to work well. When we checked with CFOS, there with CFOS there was indeed an increase in uh, in a CFOS uh, positive uh, cholinergic neurons after illumination. And when we illuminated these neurons with twenty hertz in the ITI, the the, the animals actually got uh, worse. This is their accuracy. In, in as a function of number of training sessions. So they were actually learning slower. So um, it seems like uh, messing with the cholinergic system in the ITI did not really help the animals in, in, in learning this uh, task. And uh, we, also, we also performed a, a behavioral pharmacology experiment. So that's also absolutely possible with this system. Now we injected the uh, muscarinic antagonist scopolamine in the animals, and then we were checking how their performance changes. Uh, this is an old experiment, which we just replicated to show that uh, we get similar result in the ATS, ATS than what was published with, with manual training. And indeed, uh, scopolamine injected animals um, perform worse compared to the saline injected animals, both in their light phase and in their dark phase. And uh, they, also, they also make more uh, premature responses. So this was, uh, this was uh, my part with uh, introducing the, the ATS and, um, and the five choice area reaction time task. And uh, now I will, uh, pass uh, the mic on to Balint and he will tell you about uh, other behaviors. Okay, in a moment, we have a question in the chat. Uh, so uh, at this, uh, the Balash at the same time, just one mouse could be in the training chamber. That's right, I mean. I, this yes, is yes, yes, yes. Yes, and um, even when um, even when we have um, when we have more mice in the in the home cage, we only allow one only one in the training chamber, and um, even that introduces variability because uh, then uh, the animals compete for the for the slots. So it's then it's not a given that every animal is trained. Uh, equally for equal number of, of, of sessions so that so so maybe the so the equipment is more in use in the sense that in this application it's used about 25% uh, of the time because in every hour there's a 15 minute session and then in a few minutes the mouse goes out so maybe 30% but uh, so 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 if there's more mice they use the equipment more but uh, then you have to deal with this variability of who goes in and why and uh, how often and, and so on. Uh, and that is probably even more so if, if more animals are, are, are in, a, in a training chamber. In some applications, they do that. They, of course, have to keep track somehow which, which animal is performing. And that, uh, that is probably harder. But it's probably doable. Thank you. And we have another question in the chat. Could you describe the stages of learning uh, you referred to uh, and which were very different between manual and ATM training? Yes, I think the, I think the, best, uh, the best way to measure learning in these five choices is by the training stage because um, that's completely automated. Uh, it's done the same way uh, in, in the manual and in the, in the automated way. And uh, clearly they get to way more advanced uh, training stages. Uh, I, I also show the accuracy and accuracy is also better, but uh, they're in the different training stage. So uh, then accuracy is, one may argue accuracy is not really comparable, but I, 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 I may say even if they are in, in a more advanced training stage, training stage and they are more accurate. That's also an argument for, for them being better. 
Um, and another question. Have you used the ATS for training, but then moved the mouse to another chamber for testing? For example, because there is an uh, IFIS setup or some other equipment in a testing chamber not available in all the home cages. Yes. Yes, many times we do that. And for that reason, we actually tested this specifically because uh, we, were, we were interested in this. And um, um, it's definitely worth it um, to train animals uh, in, the, in the ATS. And we were worried whether the training will translate into the manual uh, training mode, which is, might, be, con might be perceived as a different context. So, so it might be hard for the animal, but it turns out uh, this is not really an issue. So they, they, they actually generalize quite well. And uh, so we do this often because, for instance, if you want to do uh, like chronic electrophysiology, that uh, then with those big implants, we cannot leave them alone. And then, uh, uh, I mean, we can leave them alone with the implants, but we have to tether them for the, for the training. So in that case, uh, they're trained. Um, Automa automatically and then then we record their their measured manually so that's that's absolutely doable we, we do we do that routinely uh, thank you and another question isn't the number of trials to reach a predefined criterion of correct responses the best readout for learning yes that's uh, that's kind of uh, what we do when we um train them to the to the same stage and look at how many days it takes. We can also look at how many trials it takes. I think we did that, may even be there in, in some supplementary. But with the trials, I think there's not much difference, at least in this task. This was a bit surprising to us because we thought that maybe they need less trials also because they're less stressed. But it seems like they took the uh, same number of trials just perform many more trials in the ATS. And, but that also means that in, as a function of number of training days you need, uh, they, they will be much faster in the ATS. So if, you, if, 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 you, if, if what you primarily care for is like how much time I need for, that, for my mouse to be trained when I plan my experiment, then it's a huge benefit. Uh. Okay, and the next question. Mice spent two hours in the five choice cage. How many trials did they pass during that two hour interval? No, they go every two hours, uh, but they spend 15 minutes. And um, I actually don't know how many trials they do in, in, in 15 minutes. Do you know one? between 50 and 100 maybe yeah okay and i also have a question about the optogenetics so you mentioned that there is some variability uh is it greater than in the manual tasks i mean when you train animals manually and then apply optogenetics or is the similar variability you see Yes, that I don't know because we didn't test. We were thinking about that, but um, then I think on that we we kind of don't have enough data because mm -hmm. uh, that we yeah because um, there it diverged that if we could do if if the prep was such that we could do this automatically, then no one wanted to do it manually, so oh, yeah. that we don't really have comparable data and yeah. Sure. And how many animals? You showed the graph with the optogenetics data. How many animals are there? I think seven, eight. Seven, okay. So it's like the typical size of the. Yes, group. yes, it's like the typical size. Yes, what we do is like we run like say three systems in parallel, and then that's like uh, that's like three controls and three opto and three like activated mice for one week. And then next week you do another, another three. Okay. And so, but the good thing is that no one really has to touch it. So it's, um, it's, um, it's actually it was actually very nice during COVID that like <laughs> we can <laughs> we can pretend that we're not working, but the mice are still working. Yeah, it's definitely user friendly and also apparently mice friendly. So, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I think we can switch now. Okay, so in, hey. hello. <laughs> in the uh, final part of the presentation, I would like to share some uh, ideas about uh, further use cases of the ATS because though the method was uh, demonstrated through the standard five choice serial reaction time task in the uh, manuscript and in the uh, first part of the presentation, it is also compatible with a great variety of freely moving behavioral tasks and uh, uh, it can be easily extended with uh, custom made uh, tasks coded in MATLAB. The number of uh, ports is uh, changeable in the system and it can also be easily extended with, uh, with uh, uh, auditory uh, cues or with uh, aversive stimuli in the form of aircrafts or, or auditory uh, noise. Um, as it was uh, just asked, we very often use the system to pre-train animals. So we can start the actual main electrophysiological or fiber photometry experiments in animals who are uh, already well trained and performing well in the task. Uh, uh, this also shows that the, the system is, is uh, quite useful to pre-scan animals, uh, uh, for example, who are not able to, to learn a task, or, um, and, and then we can uh, only focus uh, or we can only implant those animals who, who were, were capable. Um, it's, it's also an efficient solution for, for studies focusing on uh, different uh, phenotypes, so, for example, when the best and worst performing uh, group of animals is compared in, in, in different uh, behavioral uh, tests. Uh, furthermore, we often face the problems with, uh, with um, the more complex uh, behaviors uh, we use uh, because they were, were very demanding to, to train the animals uh, in this task manually. And uh, we uh, found it uh, uh, often much easier both for the animal and for the experimenter to, to train these, uh, these complex tasks in the automated system where the animal can self-initiate uh, uh, several sessions uh, per day. And uh, finally, the ATS also creates the possibility for, for more complex uh, optogenetical man manipulation studies where the uh, food range of uh, learning stages can be Controlled, so for example, even the offline consolidation period the animals spend in the, the home cage. So, in the uh, final part, I would like to demonstrate you uh, two alternative uh, tasks one focusing on probabilistic reversal learning and another in implicit learning in mice. So, we uh, examined uh, probabilistic reversal learning. Uh, by developing a two-armed uh, bounded task. This task is named after this uh, gambling machine called the, the one-armed bandit. Uh, in this uh, task, the uh, uh, animal is uh, uh, expected to wait for a, a, for a, there are three ports uh, in this task and the uh, middle port is uh, illuminated. The animal is expected to wait for this and then poke to the, to the central port. Uh, this way we achieve that the animal starts the trial from the middle of the chamber, it's the same distance from the two uh, side ports. And uh, we also make sure that the animal is uh, focusing on the task. And after this, the animal has to choose a side, either left or right. Uh, there are different probabilities for the two sides to be uh, rewarded. If the animal makes a uh, correct uh, or a lucky choice, then uh, the animal, uh, so, so, so choose the side where the reward is, then the animal uh, receives the reward. In the other uh, case, we, uh, we signal uh, the animal that uh, this was not the good uh, choice by uh, turning off the uh, house light for a, a few seconds. Uh, when we developed this uh, task, it uh, turned out that uh, the uh, most challenging part uh, of training mice in this task, that uh, mice tended to form a, a bias for either the left or the right side. So uh, uh, we found it, uh, uh, we solved this problem by uh, 
by using uh, by implementing a pre-training uh, period in the ATS when uh, the animal cannot receive water from the same side uh, in more than two uh, constitutive trials and by training the animals for a few sessions in this uh, this uh, uh, this pre-training period we, we we reached a a point where the the animals uh, understood that uh, that it's worth to 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 switch uh, sides. So in this uh, video, you can see how a well-trained animal is performing this task. So uh, now the animal, uh, now we are waiting for the sensor light to turn on. Now it's turned on. The animal has to poke in and then choose a side. The animal choose the right side and now receive the water reward. But uh, in this other case, uh, after the, the wrong choice, we turned off the uh, the house light. What um, uh, makes this task interesting is that uh, environment volatility can be controlled through the parameters of the task, and this is reflected in the learning rate of the animals. Uh, one of these parameters is the block length uh, of the blocks in which we change that uh, which side is more likely to, to be uh, rewarded. Uh, so in this figure, the red dots show that which side uh, is the, the rewarded size in the given trials. Blue dots show uh, the choice the animal made. And the uh, blue uh, line indicates the choice probability through a moving average uh, window. And uh, what we found was that uh, uh, when one of the sides were uh, rewarded for a long time, then it took uh, more time uh, for the animal to, to make a switch to the other side when the other side become the more likely rewarded side. So uh, for example, here you can see a, a period where the animal was trained on the left side for a long period of time. And then it uh, took uh, quite a few trials for the animal to make a, a full switch to the, to the other side when the right side become the more probable while uh, in this uh, more volatile part of the task where uh, we employed shorter uh, blocks, uh, it, uh, it often took uh, uh, much less effort for the animal to, to make the switch. In the bar graphs, you can see the, the average required number of uh, trials, which was, uh, was decreasing as the length of the previous block was, uh, was de decreasing. A, another parameter which uh, we can uh, control in this task is uh, the probability of, uh, uh, of, the, of the, uh, re the reward probability of the two uh, sides and, uh, uh, and that how, how extreme are these probabilities. So it can be seen that uh, as the two probabilities are uh, getting closer to each other, it becomes uh, much harder for the animal to detect which uh, side is the more likely rewarded side. So for example, here uh, uh, in the very large uh, proportion of trials, the right side was uh, rewarded and the animal learned uh, this in a few times of trials that it's worse to go for this side, which is uh, much harder to detect for the animal when, when the, the probabilities are, are closer to each other. In uh, this other uh, study, we uh, uh, wanted to study uh, implicit learning in mice. Therefore, we, we developed a sequential learning task in which mice have to form an easy association. We light up one of the four ports in the chamber, and the animal is expected to poke into this port and then uh, can receive a, a voter reward. Uh, the implicit component of this task is that the ports are uh, illuminated in a given sequence. So uh, uh, always the same port uh, is, is following the, the, the previous one. Uh, though this seems like not a very uh, hard uh, association to uh, form, we uh, faced the issue that uh, the animals tended to do all kinds of, uh, of additional behaviors, 
by plastic, resting, cleaning, uh, poking to the previously rewarded ports and, and, and all kind of uh, uh, behaviors. Therefore, we use the ATS to, uh, to train the animals in several uh, steps in which uh, we made the task more uh, faster and faster. And uh, also in the final, by, by the time we reach the final stage of the task, the animals were expected to perform four constitutive uh, good answers to, to receive rewards. Uh, here you can see a video showing that how fast the animals are, are performing this uh, uh, task, the, the well-trained animals. Uh, at this time point, you can see when the animal uh, receives the reward after four uh, good answers. I slowed this video down to half speed to, to, to make, it less, uh, make it more clear. Uh, here you can see the animal uh, following the, the, the sequence. So first the, these two middle points and then switching here and at the fourth uh, constitu constitutive good answer, the animal receives the water reward. It is also, it also can be noted that uh, the animal is expecting the next uh, uh, port to be uh, eliminated. We can see this by that the animal uh, turns to the direction of the next port way before the uh, light is, uh, is turned on. To uh, measure uh, this, uh, this uh, behavior, we introduced blocks of, uh, of trials in which the cues were presented in a randomized uh, order. And then we compared the animal's behavior in these uh, blocks of randomized uh, trials with uh, the performance in the sequential uh, trials. And we found that both the, uh, uh, both the accuracy and the reaction time of the animals was uh, significantly better in the, the sequential uh, blocks of the uh, training compared to these, uh, to these uh, randomized blocks. So uh, I would like to uh, thank to our uh, 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 colleagues, uh, especially to Esther Birtalan and Diana Balashvi, who uh, developed this uh, 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 automated training system, uh, also to Sandworks and Joshua Sanders, who provided the uh, technical background of the system, and also to uh, Iris Sabo, Anna Maria Benka, Franciszka Benio, and uh, Vivian Pilar, who uh, participated in the training of the animals, and also uh, to, uh, the, the, to our founders, uh, and also to you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much. It was really interesting. And we have other questions here in the chat, so maybe I was to, to read them. Uh, so the first one is how long are the trials? Uh, if they are very short, below five seconds, the water reward is very low, like five microliters. And that's the only source of water. I can imagine them doing many trials or sessions to maximize the water intake. Not sure if 100, but maybe more than uh, with a food reward. Yeah, that's that's uh, a lot of points and all true, I think. So uh, uh, the, the, re the reward size is usually uh, between three, two and eight microliters we use in uh, one trial. Uh, especially in the, the, the sequential task, we, we try to make the the trial is very short, so the animal has to uh, uh, perform the task uh, very uh, fast because that, that, that's kind of the, the point of, of the, uh, the, the task. Uh, so in that case, uh, one trial, so one illumination and one poking is, uh, is, uh, is indeed very, very uh, short, even quite less than, uh, some, often quite less than, than the, the five. Uh, uh, seconds, as it can also be seen in the video. In the bandit task, it's it's more closer to the to the to the um, five or or, or more uh, seconds long uh, trials. And uh, yeah, the animals uh, perform often perform like in the range of fifty to one hundred trials in one session. If the animal initiates a session 
all the time when, when, when it is possible, then the animal can perform 12 sessions a day. Both animals can, can, can perform 12 sessions. And uh, we, we are trying to set, trying to design the task in a way that uh, uh, well, the okay or well-performing animals can uh, easily achieve the, the required amount of water through the, through the uh, task in the automated system. So we, we don't have to, to uh, worry too much about uh, uh, their, 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 their water, water intake, so they can easily uh, uh, get few around two milliliters of, of, of water uh, you know, through the, performing the task well. Okay, thank you. And uh, if you have any other questions, you are very welcome to uh, unmute yourself and ask the questions directly. Uh, but we have uh, another question in the chat, so uh, I will read it. Uh, in order to prevent erratic chance responses, would it be possible to introduce air paths to wrong pokes instead of speeding up so much at the trials? Uh. Absolutely, the, the the system is uh, is uh, capable of it. So not in this automated version, but but in other tasks we train manually, we, we often use uh, aircraft from from the same system. So so the BPOT system is is, is uh, compatible with with uh, with uh, delivering uh, aircraft. There are also the, the equipments uh, can can be bought from from Sunworks uh, to it. Uh, in this exact case uh, we 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 didn't really wanted uh, uh, this because uh, um, because that would weaken the implicit component of the of the uh, task so um, uh, we are the idea our idea is is rather that uh, uh, the the uh, Animal is forming an association about the the sequence in a non-conscious um, manner. While if we uh, give punishments for each of the the, the wrong um, answers, then it's, uh, it's it's rather a stronger conditioning of, of behavior. Okay, thank you very much. 